Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 12th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll cover some UI on screen to show us how many coins we have collected. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So, as with most games, once we collect something, we want something on screen to say, yep, we've collected it, here we go, this is what it looks like. And to do that, we need to add in a canvas, and we also need to add in a UI element, and that UI element is going to be a text box. So let's go to Game Object, UI, and let's go to Text. And it will add in a couple of objects, but firstly, let's name this to Coin Count. Now, I'm not going to get to this just yet, we're going to go to the canvas first. What is the canvas? Well, let's double click. And if we look, it looks like a big rectangle. And what this is, is it displays all of our UI overlaid on screen. Now, many people have many different size devices and screens and whatever else. So we need to make sure that everything we put UI based appears the same on any screen. And to do that, we need to change the canvas scaler. So make sure we do have canvas selected. Let's change it to scale with screen size. Let's set a standard screen size, let's say 1920 by 1080. And we also need to match it width and height perfectly in the middle. So we set this as 0 0.5. What that will do is it will make sure that no matter whatever screen size, it scales perfectly. So what do we do next? Well, let's go to our coin count right here. We want this to say in the text box, for now, coins, currently, zero. But we don't want it to appear in the middle of the screen randomly. We want it to appear up here in the top corner. So let's select our rec tool and let's move it up here to round about there. And if we click on our game view, we can see it's perfect just there. We do need to modify our anchor settings right here. And to give you an idea of what the anchor settings are for, if we look at our coins right there, it looks fine. However, if we drag our game view out and increase the size, it doesn't quite appear in the same position or in the correct position. So what we need to make sure is that we set the anchoring to this object correctly. It needs to be anchored to the top left. So we need to set this right here. So now, no matter whatever screen size we have, it will always appear relative to the top left corner. Perfect. Let's change the size of this a little bit. Let's have the text as maybe 52. Let's have it bold as well. Uh, but then that means we just need to change the size like so. And how's that look? Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's okay. We'll make it look a little better as time goes on throughout the series. But for now, let's distinguish it a tiny bit from the game itself. Let's add in another object. Let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and we'll select raw image. Now, just because it's called raw image, it doesn't necessarily mean it's an image. We can use it as just a plain object. So let's call this coin back. So this is going to be the background to the coins. So I'm going to move this up here. And once again, we're going to anchor it to the top left. And I'm going to stretch it over the coins to round about there. And bring it upwards to there. And we can't actually see it right now. Let's change it to the color black and we still can't see our coins. However, if we change the alpha of our color, so select the color again, change the alpha to 100, we can see it, but only just. What we need to do is we need to change the ordering of things in the canvas. So whatever is furthest towards the bottom of the canvas will be rendered on top. So for example, if we drag coin back up to the top of the canvas, that will be rendered behind the coin count. And there we can see, yep, that doesn't look too bad at all. So let's move this over just a tiny bit, uh, just to give it a bit more. How's that look? Yeah, we'll settle for that just for now. Again, you take your time with stuff like this, make it how you want it to look. We just need something on screen that says how many coins we've collected. So how do we make it now? So when we collect that coin, this number changes. Well, we need to create a script which we can think of a, that contains master information. So let's right click, 
create a new script. We'll call this one master level info. In fact, you know what? That's too long. We'll just call it master info. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So the variables we're going to need in this is going to be the number of coins that we currently have, as well as that text box that we've just created. Now, with the variable itself for the coins, we need to define it a little differently. We need to say public static and then int for integer, and we'll call it coin count. We'll make it equal to zero and a semicolon. Now, the reason we define it as public static is because we want the coin collect script to be able to talk directly to this script, the master info script, and say, we've collected a coin, you need to add one. If a variable isn't static, then other scripts are not able to interact with the variable in this way. So for example, if we were to just have it as public int coin count, it would mean that the collect coin script couldn't interact. If we were to have it serialized field int coin count, it wouldn't be able to do it once again. Now, the next variable we're going to have is serialized field because we don't need any other script to interact with this. Um, we'll have it as a game object and we'll call it coin display. Now, let's get rid of the annotations and the start method because we don't need to use them, they're fine. We'll do this in the quickest, easiest, and crudest way because at this point, all we want to do is just be able to display how many coins we have on, on the screen. We don't need to do anything else. You know, what we're going to do here isn't going to be memory hogging or anything like that. It's going to do exactly what we need it to. So we can say uh, coin display dot get component and in spiky brackets we need to get that text box so what we say is tmp r o capital uh, tmp there uh, dot tmp underscore text and then close spiky bracket open close bracket dot text equals and we'll say in quotes coins and then space and then another quote and then plus coin count and what this will do is it will update on screen whatever the value of coin count is so if we save this script now and then head back into unity and we just need to attach this master info to our level controls so if we drag and drop master info onto level controls, and we just need to define that coin display right there. So coin count, drag and drop over there. And if we press play, nothing is actually going to happen. But if it does indeed say coins zero, it's working as intended. Well, one thing I've noticed there is I haven't put a colon. So I'm going to have it just like that. Uh, so head back into Unity. And if you have a problem with any of these scripts, as always, go to the pinned comment. You can download the script for free there. It's also a link in the description. So how do we make it so as these coins add together? Well, it's actually really, really simple. If we go to coin collect and where we have void on trigger enter, after we have played the audio sound, we need to reference that master info script. So we can say master info dot coin count plus equals one semicolon and save and all this will literally do is it will talk to master info and say look you need to add one to your coin count because we've just collected one and if we go back into unity just to kind of illustrate how this works i'm going to go to coin and although the, you know we've got no coins ahead of us, we still need to put the coins inside the other um, segments, which we'll do in a second. I'm going to just duplicate that for now, move it ahead, just a couple there, press play, and it will say uh, zero. But as we collect the coins, you'll see exactly what happens. We should see it increase. Excellent. That is exactly what we need to happen. Uh, one thing I will do, I am going to change the audio level. It does appear a little bit loud still. 
Uh, so let's have a 0 0.06. Let me see, see how loud that is. I don't want it overwhelming me. That'll do. Okay, so before we leave this uh, where it is, I'm going to remove those extra four coins. Uh, I'm going to leave that coin there. Duplicate that to there. That to there. To there. To there. And I'm going to take these and I'm quickly going to put them into other segments. So I'm going to select them, hold control, press D, and drag them into that segment. And what I'm going to do now is drag them all the way to that other segment. Because if we look, this segment, I'm going to move it over here. And you can see the coins over here are moving with it. So what we can do is bring it to there, take those coins, and just bring them to there, zoom in. Let's uh, take the time to put the coins where we want. So let's put some random coins here, there, and everywhere, I guess. You would take much more time than what I'm doing because I'm just kind of rushing through this, just to kind of prove a point. Uh, so I'm going to take those coins there, hold control, press D, and I'm then going to drag them into the next segment, which is there. And if we double click on this segment and move this to there, we can then move those coins that we have just placed into the correct position. So probably somewhere about there. So you would just do that as you need to. So if I press play now, we should be able to see, at least after the, this first uh, segment, that we have coins loading on different segments. And you can, I'm not sure you can see it, but just there we have some coins that have loaded into different segments. So I'm going to go a little bit further ahead. Um, yeah, we can see them all loading. So all of these coins should work just fine. And obviously that one might be problematic when we end up with collision. You're not going to be able to get it, but everything looks perfectly fine right now. Excellent. So, next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to create some collision with objects. So, if we run into a rock, we stop, basically, uh, and that's the end of the run. Uh, again, if you've not played Timmy and Mouse, I would implore you to go back to the first tutorial, click the link in the pinned comment, have a play, and you'll see exactly how this is all going to pan out. So yeah, next tutorial is going to be all about colliding with objects. Remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial. And I will see you next time.